urban roof water harvesting. City, uh, City Hall in Seattle has a 215,000 gallon rainwater cistern for all toilet flushing and irrigation use for the, for the city there. The uh, legislature two years ago in Texas funded a study of rainwater harvesting potential for the entire state of Texas. That's now out and they're putting hundreds of millions into buy down programs like we do for photovoltaics, buy downs for rainwater harvesting systems throughout the state of Texas. Look, Arizona will give you 1500 bucks for a roof water system. City of Santa Rosa, where I come from, will charge you 60 bucks for a permit, $200 backflow preventer with a $100 annual fee if you want to put a 55 gallon drum underneath the downspout because you can't have cross connection issues. It's going to cost you 300 bucks for a 55 gallon drum. That's not even plumbed anywhere because it's got a garden hose. So there's policy. I'm supporting you guys, that those of you who make policy or do county plans, city general plans. The biggest limitation of moving this ball forward is mostly policy. So then imagine, well, let me do, let me wrap this up and then I'll do Q and A because I, because of that shutdown, I'm a little more behind time. Um, so imagine this, right? You could catch water off this large home, and every pool in Santa Barbara now becomes a rainwater harvesting pond with an integrated in situ constructed wetland called a regeneration zone in the world of these living pools that's planted with natives, in this case like cattails or non-natives. This is a carbohydrate producing plant. You could have wasabi root in there, taro root in there around here, right? Water chestnuts in there, all these carbos. You could stock it with freshwater prawns, little freshwater shrimp. So I could have a little freshwater shrimp sashimi with my own wasabi root in my swimming pool that's chlorine free, that's stormwater harvesting, right? Every, um, every American backyard pool becomes a full-blown protein carbohydrate producing aquaculture swimmable system. Sheet mulch the lawn, put in an edible food forest. And as the saying goes, right, the Chinese said that with water in the well and food in the ground, what need for king or government have I? This is the Department of Home Water Security right here, crew. And doing this is called sustainable hedonism. And that, the lifeboat I'm looking to design is a lifeboat that's going to, it's going to be a party, right? And we're going to be like, lay into the oars, gentlemen, give me a pinot, let's say a mistake, I need a freshwater prom with my wasabi, right? We can do this. We can do this. This is not impossible stuff. It's design. Living roofs, green roofs, they're off the charts. People are doing them all over. The largest urban set of green space at this point, besides like uh, Golden Gate Park and the city is gonna be on the Cal Academy of Sciences green roof. That's being planted with a vegetation community that's specific to a little blue butterfly that's an endangered species. It's gonna be the largest open space of native habitat for this endangered butterfly on the peninsula there is gonna be on the roof of Cal Academy of Sciences. And it's a stormwater system, water quality purifier. In the case, this is Atlanta Zoo, keeps the heat out of the building, saves energy, keeps the heat in the building, saves energy, reduces the urban heat island effect. Atlanta's 15 degrees hotter than the surrounding areas in the summertime. So you start stacking the benefits up once again. See, the game is, is how many functions can you get out of one element and save more money and have a more higher quality of life as you do it? For not just you, but everyone else. Zero escaping, native landscaping, butterfly, bird habitats, really fun, low water using. I mean, my game is, we've been working the bugs out for a long time, literally. And the entomologist in me says, you gotta work the bugs back into the system. For every pound of human flesh on the planet, take six billion plus of us and weigh us, there's 300 pounds of insect biomass. If you design a system that excludes insects, you have designed a system that is designed to fail. It's just, that's just the way it works. So. And then there's the whole reuse size, but I'm not going to get a lot into. This is a fun one, a constructed wetland pond at Benziger Winery in Glen Ellen, Sonoma County. They recycle all the wastewater from the processing plant, 3 million gallons a year for irrigation. And they have beautiful vine row um, cover crops and things and great soil practices. So you can do that one. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to do. And then there's the gray water question. You have Art Ludwig coming. He's a native of Santa Barbara. He's 
right? I, Art is the, he's the god of gray water. He's amazing. I totally honor him. R really good friend. But this is a fun one for Brad Lancaster, right? So here you got your little thing. This one goes to the fig, the sapota, the orange, and the peach. Move the hose to a different tree every load. And it's subsurface disposal. It's not the super hippie style where you're just laying the hose out, right? It goes, this is buried in the ground. That rock lives on there. The pipe comes in here. This is a surge chamber, right? This is just showing you what this looks like under there. And it just allows subsurface disposal irrigation in situ of gray water. Every gallon that you could catch on site that you can reuse on site is a gallon. It didn't have to be pumped to you and doesn't have to be pumped away. And when you do the math, this is going to add up. And society will pay us to do this if we don't do it ourselves. And so hopefully, I guess, in some, I'm looking for that, you settle back in and just ponder water, reflect on that, how foundational it is to our life. You got to get politically active. <laughs> You may need to put your salmon suit on. Wear shorts, because it's hot in that thing. <laughs> Go to the board of soups, put the mic in the suit, step up to the plate, and speak on behalf of Totem Salmon. You got, I, have a, I have a tiger salamander suit. Cross crawl into city council meetings, get up to the board, right? Bring it on. If, if, if you don't participate in democracy, then you will get freedom which is spelled F-R-E-E-D-U-M-B, freedom, because we are not participatory. We got, I just don't get it, voter thing, I don't get it. So are you part of the solution or part of the precipitate game? It's, it's up to you. You guys take your pick. Can you precipitate the change you want to see in this life? The no regrets policy will tell you doing all of this, climate change or not, peak oil or not, the quality of your life in your community will be better for having done it. And in the advent, advent that anything gets a little bit edgy and weird with climate change or peak oil, you're going to be happier than you did it. Your lifeboat will be happier. So no regrets. It's a good gig. And so the game becomes this, in this conservation hydrology idea, can we adapt our water footprint, be regenerative and rehydrated? It's got to be regenerative. It's not about ability to sustain. Sustainability is a flat line. Carbon neutral is a flat line. We're already <laughs> above it. You can't flatten above and expect it to get better. We've got to bring it down. You've got to be regenerative. And that means receiving, recharging, retaining, releasing. Receiving, recharging, retaining, releasing via slowing, spreading, and sinking it through these tools to make a porous type of development so that the creek is clear, cold, and copious for coho or salmon or whatever you want, right? That's your deal. As so I have these little booklets out there you can buy, there's five bucks as a donation if you want. Talks a lot about that. And so I'm not sure where it starts and where it ends, but you get this slice of life. And do with it what you can and pay attention and keep your eye on the prize. And maybe have eyelash envy on this female hummingbird here, right? But it's a, it's a beautiful life. And invest in your solar power, the power of your soul to step up. If solar power, it's ego system first. And it's going to be ecosystem restoration. Can you restory your connection to place? What's the story you believe in? What's your creation myth? Oil and water, the planet a community or a commodity. And all I'm doing, because you're hardwired for storytelling, is I'm telling a story around a fire. It happens to be run by some electrons, if they work. And it's just restoration of ecosystems to get to restoration of ecosystems. And that is basically then trying to reweave the web of life and put the puzzle back together, which is the work of the day. It's put the puzzle back together. It's this opposition to the post-Descartes reductionist, myopic, compartmentalized, fetishized, tear it apart, specialization world. We got to put it back together. And watershed is the vessel that will carry you home. So I thank you for your patience with me.